Hello everybody, hope you're doing okay and welcome to Shear. Now you might be wondering what I'm doing standing in a Ford. Well, that surely means it's time to test some Gore-Tex shoes. Now it seems a bit ironic doing this on one of the hottest days of the year, but considering we're in the middle of August and September's fast approaching, Nike have just released them. They've now called it the Nike React Pegasus Trail for Gore-Tex. So they've actually added in React to the title. And having had the first three versions, I was keen to test these ones to see how they've evolved. Well, the good news, first of all, that these aren't a brick. In fact, they've actually lost weight considering since the last version how waterproof they end up being remains to be seen but I was actually standing right now in the Ford and my feet are completely dry so that's a good start I think actually just on wearing these I've worn them for a, a run the other day and actually felt great as a road shoe so I think this is going to be an excellent road to trail shoe but yeah all in all this is a bit of a win for me from Nike for a change I think they've definitely approved a shoe here what I was planning to do today is a bit of a comparison between last year's model the, the Gore-Tex 3 so if you have a look at the two shoes we've got the, the trail 4 version on on the left here and the previous Trail 3 version on the right. So instantly you can see a couple of differences here. They basically, I think, designed this Trail 4 shoe to be a bit more of a road to trail shoe. So it's actually lost a fair bit of weight. In my size, it's 370 grams in a UK 13, whereas previously with the 3, it was a 396. And that's lost weight even more since the second version, which was 410. So definitely trending in the right way for a change. I think how they've reduced weight is by making the apple more minimalist and also taking some rubber off the back, which I'll look at in a minute. But so you can see here instantly between the two versions, we've got less of a toe bump here in the fourth version compared to the previous one. And it actually just feels lighter on foot. Still got a gusseted tongue on both, but we've actually lost a little bit of padding since the three. So the lockdown across the midfoot is different you can see that i've had to pull in the laces a fair bit here so they, although i've got very narrow feet i think it will work well for a range of foot widths but here you just don't have quite as much padding as you did on the three so you kind of lost that spongy bit there they've now just got like a more like a pull tab there it's still like nicely padded but not quite as much i found the laces are quite nice they sort of more of a flat style they look quite nice it's quite reflective i'll show you a picture of how it looks in the dark and you definitely feel there's a lot more sort of light now coming through and if you're running in the dark you definitely be seen looking at the rear they've actually increased the gator quite a lot so it's actually now a lot taller so you feel like you're not going to get so much sort of debris coming in and they've actually lost a bit more weight by making the hill canter slightly less rigid so in the three version you had these extended plastic reinforcements at the side but they've now kind of lost them and it's much more flexible than it was before looking at the side view here i think the fourth version at the top just looks a bit more racy and uh, it just feels like it's a slightly more minimalist feel to it this sort of material just sort of feels thinner We'll do some waterproof testing in a minute. I think the big difference for me is now on the outsole. The four here on the left looks a bit more like a traditional Pegasus outsole. And the one on the right is actually quite a lot more thicker. But when you put it on foot, you notice that there's a lot more flexibility in the outsole now on, on the four compared to the three. So maybe it's not quite as a rugged as a, as a trail shoe, but in terms of like a road to trail shoe, then I think it's working a lot better. So here's a view of the two shoes on my feet. We've got the three on the left and the four on the right. You can see there's a lot of folding there which I tend to have to accept the fact that they've got very narrow feet but it does actually allow them to be a very snug fit across the midfoot here so it's a bit like a next percent version one that my they feel that the material is just hugging my foot very nicely indeed and I've got quite thin socks on as well so that's a bonus whereas this one I thought the, the lockdown wasn't too bad but it just sort of feels like I'm far better connected to the shoe in the four. Okay, the little dog managed to negotiate the water, so let's see if I can have a go, see how waterproof these shoes are. So I'm standing right in it here, quite a lot of flow across the top there, and I'm not feeling any water coming through my shoes yet, which is a good sign. So I think one advantage of being able to get these shoes quite tight is that I'm perhaps restricting the amount of opportunity for the water to come in. Okay, so that was a good test. I think the acid test now, we'll see if I can actually run through here without falling over. Let's try the other way. It was a bit of a tiptoeing motion there, but I survived. Okay, the run through the four test went rather well. Didn't fall over. Don't feel my feet are overly wet, which is good. There's actually a benefit of shear. They actually got two fours. I'm approaching the other one, which has got a bit more of a muddy approach to it. So 
Let's see if we can have a go through this one as well. So here's the other Ford, literally 200 yards down the river. I think this one's a bit less inviting for cars, but for runners, well, let's have a see how we get on. What we want to see is how deep I need to get before I can start filling the water. I start feeling it very slightly there, just so my feet feel a bit cold actually, but I'm not actually feeling that they're wet, which is encouraging. Okay, I think the acid test will be to run through this one and just pick my line. It's to get rather wet here, but it has been 35 degrees today, so you've got to get on you to calling off like those dogs, don't I? Job done. Right, I need to run back now. Yeah, I do feel that there's a slight amount of water to get through to my socks now. Now, some people say with Gore-Tex shoes that that's a problem because once you get water in, it doesn't come out. Well, that's partially true, but I think most of the time, how often are you going to really be running through fords which are sort of over six inches deep deliberately, especially when you've got a nice little bridge here to actually run to the side of it. But I remember did a run one winter when it was actually tipping it down and I got so wet that I was past caring. So the fact that my shoes fill up with water is at least my concern. And I think they did fill up with water on a long run literally you just sort of take them off and tip them out and back you go maybe you need to take some spare socks with you on days like this okay the shenanigans done running through fords both of them this one was definitely a bit deeper than the other one but it's slightly easier to run through because it had more of a muddy surface i was a bit worried about the other one with the sort of slimy concrete approach but yeah don't okay a lot of people say that nike shoes aren't very grippy well i mean i've just run through two fords there which are quite deep and i managed to stay upright didn't i so that's a good sign so yeah i think all in all i'm quite enjoying these shoes i'll be looking forward to take them out in the winter for some sort of like runs on old railways when it's a bit wet and muddy i think the big advantage of a trail shoe for me is that you can put your feet anywhere and don't need to worry about the odd mud splash because normally in a road shoe first puddle you get you get absolutely sodden through and you then you've got to carry that sort of wet doubt feeling for the rest of the run and it adds about 50 grams to the shoe so however light or heavy your shoes are they're gonna weigh even more but as i say with this gore-tex shoe they just water just brushes off and unless you literally run through a, a ford like i've done it's highly unlikely you're gonna get your feet absolutely sodden and i also think with the trail shoe in the uk i really want a shoe that's going to keep my feet dry for all times of the year because you never quite know when you're going to come across some wet it's very rare in the uk unlike now if it's we completely dry out on all the trails often in the summer it can be more muddy than it can be in the winter so yeah, looking forward to using this one. I've even set a couple of course records already when I was at Albury Cricket Pitch the other day. <laughs> Admittedly, you need to choose your segments these days, but it shows that it can actually get up to speed. And it did a five mile road run with a, just a bit of trail and it felt almost like I was wearing a normal road shoe. So in terms of a road to trail option that you can kind of do it all sort of shoe, great. I think the only disadvantage of this shoe compared to the Endorphin Speed Run Shield, which I really enjoy, is that the Run Shield is somewhat lighter, but that is really a fundamentally a road shoe. I wouldn't be looking to sort of run through fords in that one. And I think the waterproofing in this one is better. So I think this one is a bit more like an everyday trainer. You fully could pick up the speed if you wanted to, as I did on that cricket pitch the other day, but not an out and out tempo shoe for like, using in wet weather. I think you could do, but you'd just be sacrificing a bit of extra weight. So I hope you enjoyed this look at the Nike React Pegasus Trail 4 Gore-Tex. Bit of a mouthful, but there we go. So yeah. Here we are in the middle of August in a heat wave, but yeah, you can imagine in a few weeks' time before feeling more autumnal, I mean, we're looking to get out on the trails again and sweating a lot of mud, so I don't think it's ever far away from muddy conditions in this country. Okay, see you on the next one then. Bye! Okay, so now back for my run. I did about another two miles after my trips through the fords. Let's see how wet these shoes are. A bit of dampness in the upper for sure. The top of my socks feel fairly damp. It kind of felt like it was sort of fairly damp on foot but as I ran more and more it kind of felt like it was drying up more and more and more let's just take these off yeah I mean I've got a bit of water there on the socks but yeah, they're not sodden for sure you can actually take the insoles out of these ones and yeah they do feel a bit wet and uh, but as I said earlier I think the, the secret if you do get your shoes wet is to sort of take them out just give that a bit of a rinse through there's not much water's coming off there but you can even sort of put a bit of a, a towel to that or something and then get them off maybe change your socks and you're ready to go again i think yeah my actual sock can't really say that it's wet enough to actually wring any water out there so that's good okay one sort of fairly dry sock as it were <laughs> 
Okay, time for a new Gore-Tex shoe in the middle of a heat wave. The Nike React Pegasus Trail 4 Gore-Tex. Four of you coming soon. I need to find a Ford. It's got some water in it first. Ha <laughs> ha.